Let's just do stuff. So, guys, what do you know about Japanese? <laughs> what do you know about Japanese? How, how do we do this? How do we how do we teach a lesson? So, I guess I should just start. A <laughs> So I guess uh ma hajime mashite watashi no namae wa legumes des dozo yoroshiku So hello my name is Ryan nice to meet you or legumes actually my name is Ryan also though and I majored in Japanese which was generally a bad idea but uh I know some stuff as long as somebody doesn't come in here who knows more than me and then I'll be embarrassed but I should be able to teach you the basics pretty easily uh, let's see, do I have everything set up properly? I believe I do. Let's change the stream title quick. Let's do that. Alright. Excellent. So, so Japanese is a language. You uh, probably knew that much. And the first thing I usually teach whenever I teach Japanese is how to pronounce it. Hey, welcome. Nabda. El Nabda. E Nabda. <laughs> welcome to the stream. This is the first time I've done something like this on stream. But I do teach Japanese lessons in person, which is a lot, uh more normal, because I can actually see who I'm talking to. But the first thing I like to teach about Japanese is how to pronounce stuff, because that way, even if you don't know any Japanese, you can just sound it out and sound like an intelligent person. And luckily, Japanese is pretty easy to pronounce. It only has these vowel sounds. Look at these. So easy. You have the letter ah. It sounds like ah. You have E, which is written like an I. Sounds like E, as in sushi. Wow. <laughs> you have U. Sounds like U. E sounds like E. Eh, and O sounds like O. Now, technically, you can actually combine these... Whoops, what am I doing? You can put two of these in a row and and sort of have a different sound, but you really just sound them out together, and it, it makes some sense. Like this A plus an I is going to sound like A ah, E I makes some sense. I uh, one thing that people mess up a lot is the Y. So there's a lot of words, a lot of Japanese words that have Y's in them, but the Y is going to sound like a consonant, kind of. <laughs> nice. Hajimemashite. <laughs> So, the Y sounds like a consonant, which confuses a lot of people. Because in English, we'll say Japanese words with Ys as if it's the E sound, like Tokyo, we'll say. But really, in Japanese, it would sound like Tokyo. It's sort of a blend of Kyo. And there's a lot of words like that. Kyoto is another city in Japan that not it's not going to be Kyoto, it's going to sound like Kyoto. So that's something to remember with the Y sound that a lot of people don't realize if they don't know Japanese. Um, what other words are there like that? I don't know. Lots of Japanese words that have that. So that's the main thing. Uh, you can also, with vowels here, so I was saying you can put two in a row to make a sound like I, combination, I, E, or, I don't know, Ue. That's, that's kind of just sound them out. Ohio, angelic dirt. <laughs> Although for me it's afternoon, so konnichiwa. Hey there, hey there, time to split. Welcome. Yokoso. <laughs> that would actually be Ohio. Let me write it in the chat for you. Ohio would be good morning. So I was saying you can combine these things. But, sometimes you can combine the same letter or an O-U in a row. 
or uh, EI kind of does a similar thing. And that sort of extends the sound of the vowel, so there's a couple words like this, shujin and shujin, with the, the double U here. And it just sort of, you hold the sound of the vowel longer, so that's another thing to keep in mind. Uh, sometimes that's written with a line over it, like if there's an O, if you're, if you're reading it, they have it spelled out in English letters, they might have an O with a line over it, or in Japanese it would be spelled O-U probably. And so that, that just means you hold the sound longer, like, um, actually, let's see, what's a good example of that? <laughs> I can't think of anything. <laughs> uh, I don't know, lots of them. <laughs> What's a, what's a good word with O, with a long O? I'm sure we'll encounter something. Ohio, for example. Ohio. So the beginning of Ohio, Ohio, the first O is just O, but the end of Ohio is a long O. <laughs> Konbanwa, that's correct if you're in evening. Konbanwa. Okay, so vowels, pretty simple, I would say. The uh, consonants are also mostly simple, but there's a little bit of difference between what you'd expect. So you guys have heard the, uh, the, uh, what, what do you call it? The thing about Asian people not getting L's and R's right, and that's not just a stereotype. Like, they actually, the sound of L's and R's in Japanese, and probably other Asian languages too, definitely Korean. Uh, but they're, it's kind of like a mix of L and R. It's not like a hard R sound, but it's not quite L either. It's, it's just sort of like a blend. I usually tell people that if, like, Basically, they're going to have a hard time distinguishing L and R, but if you just do something in between, it's not a problem for you. It's more of a problem for them to go the other way. So that's that's something else. I'll, what do they say instead of L and R when they speak English? They sort of... Whatever they try, it's going to be wrong. <laughs> it's still kind of a mix. Something between L and R. So whatever they say, it's going to sound wrong, basically. That's why there's the stereotype. <laughs> yeah, so, and, and they have a lot of English words that are imported, like restaurant here. I have restaurant. Restaurant. That's... That's how you say restaurant. <laughs> you just say... There's a lot of words that if you don't know the word, you could just say the English word with a Japanese accent, like restaurant. But that one takes the T off. Or, here's another word with the R in it, Ryoko, and it also has the long O at the end. Ryoko, for traveling. Alright, there's the N sound, which is a little bit more nasally, sort of like, mm, I, I don't know, it's, it's basically N. It's slightly different, but it's basically the same. And N is also unique because all of the letters, close, close there. If that's going to be Ryoko... So that, Roku. I think you're trying to do Ryoko. Ryoko, or wait, Ryoko? Ryoko. I think I spelled this wrong in my notes. I think this is supposed to be a long O also. Ryoko? Ryoko. Now I'm questioning it. So, I just typed that, but... There's a small yo to make the R, the uh, the Y blend, but we'll get to that more. N though is unique because normally all of the all of the letters have a combination of a consonant and a vowel, except for N. N can be the only consonant sound that ends in a word, and it's it's like arguably not even a consonant, but Raku. Yep. Yep. There's a lot of words like that. Alright, Tsu. Tsu is, is like it looks like. The only thing weird is sometimes people are like, Oh, Tsu, that's weird. You can't have a T-S-U in a word, but you can. You just sound it out, Tsu. And, I mean, we have... We have the T-S sound at the end of words, like cats. So some people do have trouble starting words or having T-S-U in the middle of words. So, uh, sometimes you could practice by saying, like, cats, and then going into the next word, like, katsunami. <laughs> Ping pong goo. Nah. Nah, just ooh. 
Or O. Oh. <laughs> Alright, Foo. Foo, the F is a little bit lighter than the, the English F, so it's not like f it's like Foo. It's almost like an H kind of or it's 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 an F, but it's not a strong F. Okay? Continuing on. Double consonants. So this, like for example, Raku, that's the English word for rock, or you know, they they trans they, they imported the English word for rock, has a double consonant. So double consonants are you sort of have like a small pause in between, or right before the double consonant. Or you can just sort of say it like almost like you say the consonant twice. Uh who 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 how would you use uh, I think you don't use your teeth. Who? 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 <laughs> and just your lips, I guess. Who? It's like it's it's similar to it's similar to who? So double consonants have the, uh, the the short pause in between. So here's some examples of that, like gakko for school. Gakko. There's sort of a pause with the Ks. Gakko. I'm not the one. Baka does. <laughs> That's not very nice. <laughs> Baka. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell people what a, what awkward hero says. Ipa. <laughs> So Ipai is full, Opai is boobs. <laughs> so, oh, here's something in Obde, I don't know how to say your name really. But this is another common mistake. So you said, you said this, Anata wa Baka des, alright? Now here's the thing. That makes sense phonetically. If you sound that out, it makes sense. But usually, when you use wa, there there are sentence particles. We'll get to this after we do vocab or after we do uh, pronunciation stuff. But you would want to use uh, this. Because. Because wa is there you go. So that's something common mistake. Even also konichiwa. This is something right. So this is something else. Well, a lot of people do. A lot of people do spell konichiwa with the, the hiragana wa. But uh, you you technically would use that ha letter because it, it came from a phrase like this day is or good day that kind of thing, and so it was originally the the particle wa which is actually a ha but it says it sounds like wa. All right, Waluigi. So here's something about Waluigi. It's actually a pun. So you have Luigi, and you have Waluigi, and Warui means bad. So it's like bad Luigi. Waluigi. There you go. Now you learn something about Waluigi. Wah! Alright. So I think you got these. Gakko, Ipai. Devoiced value. Okay. This is something that's a little tricky and you sort of have to just get the hang of it. Irked indeed. Nice screen name. <laughs> Welcome. So, here's something that, yeah, you just sort of have to get the hang of it. There's a pattern for it, but I'm not going to bother explaining it all right now. But usually you could just sound out every letter and you're good to go. But there are, there are some things that are just so common that they just sort of drop the vowel sound, or it gets blended together with things. Like, lots of things end in U. Lots of verbs end in U, especially. So you've probably seen desu all over the place. Desu, 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 desu. Well, that's such a common word 
because it means like am is are was were being that kind of thing and it's such a common word that it it's usually just gonna sound like des unless somebody's being fancy obde obde all right in obde all right thank you so des is gonna sound like des Mas, lots of verbs in the polite form are going to end in mas, masu, and it's just going to sound like mas, unless you're trying to be fancy or girly or whatever. So technically it's spelled with the U at the end, but it's just such a common word you just drop it most of the time. And sometimes there's word or letters in between things too, like she and te, she te or she ta. It's just going to sound like shte or shta because they're just such common things that it just gets blended. I had a teacher that taught uh, Sanskrit in college, and he taught the the rule of laziness when it comes to languages, which is languages tend to get simpler over time, and so that's sort of an example of that. Instead of sounding everything out, sounds get dropped because people are lazy and want to talk fast. Uh, pitch, it's not as big of a deal as in Chinese, where like you have all these different pitches and how you raise and lower your voice changes the meanings. There's a few words like that that I'm really bad at uh, doing examples for, like hashi and hashi for bridge, chopsticks. I'm really bad at doing this, honestly. But um, there's a slight difference. But usually you can just tell by the context of the sentence. <laughs> sure, angelic dirt. Okay. So, I was saying earlier how all the letters, except for N, and I guess the vowels, are going to be a combination. Why they do stuff like shinbashi, 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 you mean the... That's just, uh... So, <laughs> nice sad sloth. <laughs> yes. So, sad sloth learned some. Uh, sad sloth is my sister, by the way. She learned some. Um, what's it called? Linguistics in college. She's right, she's right. And yes. And N N's and M's are very similar, and it's it's also just like the Japanese N sound is is something not quite like an English N. And so when they write it in English, uh, it can be sort of either way. It's up to your personal taste really. It's sort of like nunchucks and numchucks. Both are correct. It's just personal preference on how you want to spell it. So, there are actually three different systems of writing that all you use all of them in combination in Japanese, okay? So the easiest ones, you can do these, you can spell things out phonetically these ways. So you have hiragana, which you're going to use in combination with kanji, which is the Chinese characters that they imported. Kanji usually mean like, they have meanings and multiple different sounds to them. So you have to memorize those and uh... Those are going to be your nouns, the kanji, are going to most of your nouns, your verbs, adjectives, and then you would modify them with hiragana. Or, if you don't know how to spell something with kanji, you can just spell it phonetically with hiragana. Because if you're a noob or something, or if you're playing an old Pokemon game and they don't have enough like tile sets, or if it's for kids or whatever, they might spell everything in hiragana and katakana. So you can spell everything out phonetically here, and there's something, a combination of the consonants and the vowels. So like wa, ra, ya, ma, ha, na, ta, etc. 
Uh, there are a few more that you can you can also get. Like if you make a small yaw, that's how you get the the blends with the the Y sound, or U small yo, those sort of things. Uh, you can also add dots onto things like. Um, you could do add dots or circles, and that modifies the consonant sound a little bit. So, like, if you put a ga, it's a ka with the with dots, or a, same with this gi. So it sort of makes the consonant a harder sound if you add little dots next to it. So that's something else you can do. Or za, or zu, you add dots. Or da, or de, you add dots. Uh, ha becomes ba, or you can add a circle for pa, so it sort of makes them harder consonants. Anyway, anyway, there's letters for each combination of a consonant and a vowel, so that's how the thing works. And then you're thinking, well, these are like the same, why do they have two sets here? So these, like I said, hiragana you're going to use in combination with kanji and to spell words phonetically. Katakana, as you can see here. Phonetic word or foreign words, rather. Names like foreign names. They're going to spell Japanese with Japanese names with kanji usually. And onomatopoeia, that's like sound effects like uh bam or I don't know what. There's lots of sound effects in Japanese. They have a sound effect for silence, that's sheen. They have a sound effect for staring at somebody. I mean, it's it's not even a sound effect at that point, but g is is staring at somebody. Uh, there's tons and tons of sound effects that you can use. You spell them out with katakana. Or you can spell your own name with katakana, because chances are you're not Japanese if you're watching this stream. And this is what you would use to spell your name. You just spell out phonetically. <laughs> Angelic Dirt is staring at me. Or no, Angelic Dirt is being silent. My chat is being silent. <laughs> Sheen is the silence one, right? Excellent. So that's the basics of pronunciation. I know it took a little while to explain all that, but I wanted to go into some detail. So now, if you remember all this, and I could actually, uh, I should probably put this up somewhere so you can download it if you want for reference, or you can probably just Google it. But if you know all this stuff, you can read any Japanese word, and it's not that hard. It's really not that hard to read Japanese words. So whenever you're playing Japanese video games or you see Japanese names and you're like, how do I even say that? It's not that hard. You just sound it out with the pronunciation rules and you're good to go. Wow. Such excitement. Holy moly. Let's pull up another page. Um, unless there's kanji, then you don't. <laughs> right. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes they'll have kanji, they'll have the reading above the kanji. So, for example, I know um, I helped some speedrunners translate things for Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, and that game does have a combination of kanji, hiragana, and katakana hit. But since it is uh, sort of a kid's game, the kanji, you know, kids might not know all the kanji yet, even though they'll start learning that early in grade school, but um, they'll have the reading of the kanji written in hiragana and small letters above the kanji. So even if you don't know kanji, a lot of times you can read that well, maybe not a lot of times. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Let's look at some phrases and numbers. This is probably my least favorite part. Uh, let me see. Where's my... Memorizing phrases and numbers. This didn't work. Why? Hold up. Didn't work. Come on now. I'm gonna have to re-add it, I guess. Or oh, it worked. There we go. Nice. Go us. Okay, 
So, now that you know how to pronounce things, we can learn some basic phrases, which you may already know. Or you may not already know. Who knows what you know? I don't know. Alright. So, let's go through some of these. Perhaps you do know them already. Hey, you probably know height and EA. Height for yes, EA for no. EA is crazy, look at this, it's like all vowels, that doesn't make any sense, but it's true. EA. Or height. Or sometimes, if you're being casual, you can just say, eh. <laughs> for yes. Or for no, you could say, hmm. Nope. Or I guess for a yes, you could also say, hmm. There's a lot of just grunt sounding things in Japanese too. <laughs> okay, so, Watashi, you've, you've seen some people use Watashi in chat already. And Watashi, Boku is typically only for boys, unless you are a masculine girl. Yep. <laughs> typically, yes. Watashi, you can use anybody. Boku na Watashi. <laughs> I don't even know what to make of that. Are you a girl? I don't think I even knew that, Angelic Dirt. Anybody can say Watashi. Boku. Usually guys. And Anata for you, but usually you're not even going to say Anata unless you don't know the person. Uh, Anata can actually be... Uh, you could use that to say dear, like for your husband or wife or something too, I've heard. <laughs> That's okay, we haven't even learned how to make sentences yet. An interesting thing though, uh, a lot of times the subject is dropped in Japanese, especially when it's Watashi or Boku. Like, you can just say the thing. Like, you can just say the rest of the sentence and they'll assume you're talking about yourself. Like, if the subject is clear, you don't even need to say the subject. You can just drop the subject entirely. So a lot of, uh, a mistake that new people do a lot of times is saying watashi wa, watashi wa, watashi wa at, at the beginning of every single sentence. And it's really not necessary, it's just, it's redundant, you don't need to say it all the time. But you can say it if it's not clear that it's you that you're talking about. So, let's just, uh, we can go through this very briefly here, but introducing yourself, you can say hajime mashite. Hajime mashite. Everybody say it in front of your computers. Make people wonder what you're doing. Hajime mashite. Alright. So, you can say, for my name is... I would do this one. This is the best way to remember it, because you can remember multiple things at once here. Watashi no namae wa... Whatever. Des. My name is whatever. No. Watashi no namae wa... Ryan Des. I am Ryan. My name is Ryan. So... This is our first chance to figure out sentence structure in Japanese, which I think is pretty cool. Because I'm all into grammar and stuff. I think it's neat. So, we already learned Watashi. Good for us. Watashi is I or me. Now, Japanese has has this interesting grammar thing. Uh, interesting, uh, I guess it's almost like a part of speech. But, they're called sentence particles, alright? And sentence particles kind of like tell you what the previous word is doing in the sentence, I guess you could say. So, no is a sentence particle. Wa is a sentence particle. Uh, let's see, I don't know. This, these are just easy phrases, so we don't have too many on here. But ka down here, that's a sentence particle. We have o, also written as w-o. That's, that's a very common one. Ni, de, and so they're going to tell you things like, oh, this word is the subject of the sentence. This word is the direct object of the sentence. So that's the thing you would, you're doing your verb to, or you're verbing. The thing you're verbing. Or it might say, this is the destination, so that's the place you're going to. Or, this is the place of action, this is where you're doing something at. And so all these different sentence particles are going to tell you what the word before means, or what the word before is doing. So, in here we have Watashi no Namai. Lucky for you, Namai looks a whole lot like name, so you can remember it. Namai. And people, this is another mistake. They're gonna they're gonna say, oh, there's there's 
these AE, what's up with that? You do actually say them, not my both of these these vowels here. So the no No makes the previous word possessive. So we had Watashi, but now we have Watashi no, so me becomes my. And you can use no to make all kinds of stuff possessive. You're gonna say you could say a person's name. No, something. I don't know. Bob San. So San we add to names to be like Mr. or Mrs. It's a just a nice way to say their name. Bob San. So Mr. Bob. Bob San no namai wa. Bob des. So Mr. Bob's name is Bob. Wow. Okay. Now so we got no. No make stuff possessive. We got it. We got it. All right. Wa. Wa is called the topic marker particle, which basically is like the subject of the sentence. Everything before the wa, that's the subject, or it's the topic. Technically, you can have a topic and a subject, but for the sake of simplicity now, it's basically marking the subject of the sentence. Everything before it is the subject. Now, something weird here in Japanese, well, weird for English speakers, is the order of the sentence is going to be different. So, in English, we say, like, I don't know, I ate pistachios. So, we have the subject, and then we have the verb, and then we have the object that we're doing, that we're verbing, you know? I ate pistachios. But, in Japanese, it's in a different order. The, the subject is going to be first, usually. All the details of your sentence are going to be in the middle. And then, the verb is always going to be absolutely last. So that's something you have to get the hang of, because that's different from English. So you have all your details, and then you have your verb last. So, if there's a lot of details, you could be like, what did they do? What did they do to this, this all the stuff they're talking about? So you would actually be saying, I, pistachios, ate. That would be the order in Japanese. I, pistachios, ate. I have no idea what the Japanese word is for pistachios. It's probably pistachio, just because that's how it works. So, that's the sentence structure of Japanese. That's a pretty big deal. So here we have our thing. Here we'll once again look at this. We have watashi no my, namai that's name, wa that means all this before this is the subject. You fill in the blank. Your name, Ryan for me. My name's Ryan. Des now des. Once again, you've seen des all over the place, and like I said, it's such a common word, we just sort of drop the U usually, but it's still spelled with a U, because you can't just write a letter S in Japanese. Um, so des is our is, am, are, be, that kind of word. So that's the is. A lot of people think wa is the is, but it's not. Des is the is. So, it's in a different order. Uh, dozo yoroshiku, yoroshiku and agashimasu. There's different ways to say nice to meet you. Yeah. Alright. Let's see some other phrases that you can remember. Like, oh genki desu ka? That's how are you? Are you well? Genki, or oh genki, means healthy, or energetic, perhaps. And so genki just by itself is, is that. But there's a lot of words, this is something that's interesting in Japanese also, is that there's there's multiple levels of politeness. So I usually just start off teaching just, you know, normal politeness. There's like extra polite, you can be, you can say things in a way to humble yourself, or to like elevate the other person, or just like neutral politeness, which is good for people you don't know. And then there's casual speech, which is good for people you do know. So ogenki, this, the reason I'm bringing this up, is because adding O before certain words, or GO, can make stuff more polite a lot of times. You can't just add O or GO to everything, but um, with this you can. Is there any reason not to be super polite? Uh, I would say... probably anything over... <laughs> uh, so usually the time you're going to be super polite. Uh, 
Uh... Like, why not just be more polite? Uh... I guess... I I think they they might think... They might think, like, you're not... Mm, like, if you're friendly with somebody, and you're super polite, they, they might think uh, you're not, like... As close to them as you should be, like... Like, why are you being so polite? Like, you don't need to be so polite to me. Like, we're friends. Like, that kind of thing. Uh, it's, it's almost like they'd get the impression that you were unfamiliar with each other, even though you're good friends. So that's, that's probably why. <laughs> Too much work also, yeah. Because casual, that's also the rule. Uh... Speaking casually and, and just like among friends, it's usually faster and shorter to talk that way. And being extra super polite is usually longer, so there's that also. But like neutral politeness is usually what I teach first just because it's easiest to learn and because you can't mess up that way really, I mean. Japanese people are going to be impressed if you can speak any Japanese at all. They're gonna be like, oh wow, you're so good at Japanese! Holy crap! Because, like, a lot of people think, like, Japanese is really super hard. Even Japanese people think, oh, Japanese is really super hard. Like, how can anybody possibly learn this unless they're a native, like, Japanese person? So if you can do anything at all, they're gonna be super impressed. And just normal politeness, that's a good, way to, good place to start. Casual is a good place to go next. Yeah, they'll, they'll be impressed if you can say anything, like really. They're going to say, oh, you're so good at Japanese. And then, since Japanese people are also very polite, the correct answer to that is, ee, mada mada, is, no, no, I have a long way to go. And then they'll really think you're good because you know how to refuse compliments. Because that's the proper way to respond to that. But seriously, you talk to anybody in Japanese and they're going to say, oh, Nihongo ga jōzu desu ne! Oh, you're so good at Japanese! No, ee, mother, mother, this. No, no, I'm not. Long way to go. Let's see. So, <laughs> yeah, they're very friendly. Typically, I mean, <laughs> I shouldn't say this. On the one hand, Japanese people are very friendly. On the other hand, racism is pretty common in Japan, but. They're good at hiding it, so I guess it's not so bad. It's more of like a long-term thing. I don't know, that, that's a complicated topic I'll not go into at the moment. <laughs> Racism is common everywhere, though. I think that's just human nature. Alright. So, you got some useful phrases here. Ohayo gozaimasu. Exactly right. It's, it's always polite to be humble, and it's always polite to compliment people. Yep, exactly right. So, here's an example of, of the politeness thing, actually. Ohayo gozaimasu. Usually, you're just going to say ohayo. But, this gozaimasu can make it more polite. Ohayo gozaimasu, or just ohayo. So, I don't know, somebody you don't know that well. Maybe you're staring, staying at somebody's house through Airbnb, and you don't really know them. You could say ohayo gozaimasu. Or, if you do know them, just Ohio is totally fine. It's it's not, like, rude or anything. It's just, it's morning. Morning, or, you know, good morning. Konnichiwa, you probably know. Konnichiwa. Konbanwa, good evening. So, like I sort of said before, Konnichiwa was originally, like, good day, probably. It just got shortened to Konnichiwa, because Nichi is day. Kon would be, like, Kono for this this day, and then that wa was our subject marker. So this day, dot dot dot. Konnichiwa! Yay! Konnichiwa and konbanwa, and that's similar. Kon, this, ban, evening. Wa, dot dot dot. Evening, 
Connie, this evening is good, assumedly. Uh, good night. When you're going to bed, oyasumi nasai. Once again, if you're just being casual, you could just say oyasumi. Oyasumi. Oyasumi nasai. This nasai is like a polite, please have a good night kind of thing. But oyasumi is just good night, night, that kind of thing. Arigato, you've probably heard from like, uh, Domo Arigato, Mr. Roboto. Yeah, Arigato for thank you, Arigato. It's the long O at the end, Arigato. Gozaimasu to be extra polite with your Arigatos. And you can reply, you're welcome. Do itashimashite. This one's a mouthful. Do itashimashite. Or you could just say, ie. Ie is just nah. Don't mention it kind of thing. They could say arigato, you could just say ie. It's fine. Nah. It's, it's totally fine. Ie. Ie was our no up there. Just no. They say arigato and you say no. No. No thank. No thank me. Tis nothing. Alright, you want to say goodbye? We know how to say konnichiwa. You've heard Oyasumi before? Nice. See, you're already a pro. You're already so good at Japanese! Wow, this is in my head, in my face, in my mouth. So you said konnichiwa. Now you've probably heard sayonara. Sayonara. That has a long O here. You might just say sayonara. Sayonara. But, sayonara is usually for long goodbyes, like, I'm not gonna see you for a long time. Like, farewell. Sayonara. That is not usually what you're gonna be saying. Usually, you're just gonna say, jane for see ya, or matane, see you later, or some combination, ja matane, or mata raishu ne, for see you next week, or mata, I don't know. Get to Yobi de ne, or I'll see you on Monday. That kind of thing. Matane. So that's kind of casual, but sayonara is like a long time farewell. You're, you just like, I don't know, maybe you're visiting somebody that you only see once a year or less, and you're going back home, so you say sayonara. Or maybe you're never gonna see them again ever. Mata ashita? Yep, mata ashita is see you tomorrow. Uh, let's see, we have some other random phrases that are useful. I'm just going to sh skip Shitsureishimas. That's not really necessary. That's that's more for like classrooms or bosses. You don't need to remember this. Shitsureishimas. Ha! Ha! I don't care. I was only interested in video games. Ha! <laughs> So, here's some random phrases that are useful. Wakarimasu ka? So here is our first action verb. Whoa. So before we just had des. Des is kind of unique because it's just is. But, oh, and here's something else I should tell you. Oh, this is, this is a big deal. I forgot to tell you this. This is important. This is fun stuff. So, have you learned any other languages? I don't know. If you guys are familiar with other languages much, like Spanish or, I don't know, English, clearly. But, um, a lot of languages, the verb is going to change based on the subject. So, in English this does it sometimes, like, I am, or he is, or maybe a better example, I walk, he walks. Japanese is super easy because you don't have to do that at all. It's the same no matter who the subject is. It's so easy. And it's even easier because there's not even a future tense. Like, it's just present tense, past tense. Well, actually, present is both future and present, so it's a non-past. Past and non-past. And then you have the negative version, and you have the negative past. It's really, really easy. Like, it's a little bit more complicated because of politeness, and there's ways to string verbs together, but... Basically, it's really easy. It's way easier than Spanish and way easier than English. Like, it's just the same. Hey, Fastfly, how's it going? 
Konnichiwa. So, what I was saying, wakarimasu is our first action verb, which is understand. It's not very action-y, but understand, wakarimasu. And this ka is a new sentence particle. You can just tack ka on. That's alright, Fastfly. Take a seat. Take a seat. We'll talk later. We'll talk about your tardiness. So ka, you can just tack on to the end of sentences and you'll make it a question. In English, we have to reword things to make stuff questions. Japanese, no. Just stick a ka on the end. Or, if you're being casual, you can just sort of raise your inflection like... Uh, well, wakarimasu, the casual way would be wakaru. So you can just be like, wakaru! Or, wakarimasu ka? Or... I don't know. Kore wa nan desu ka? What is this? Kore wa nan desu ka? Uh, Kore wa mizu desu. This is water. So, Kore wa nan desu ka? What is this? Kore wa mizu desu. <laughs> That's alright, Marks. It's only a quiz. I'm just kidding. There's no test. So, ka. You see ka at the end of a sentence, that means it's a question. The sentence is a question, if you have a ka at the end. There, you learn something else. Uh, this is useful for when you're talking to people. You probably guys have heard Chotomate. Mizu. Not Mizu? What? I'm pretty sure it's just Mizu, man. I'm pretty sure it's just one eye. Pretty sure it's just Mizu. <laughs> because if I type... Whoops, if I type Mizu, whoops. So I have, uh, I can switch to Japanese on my keyboard. So, let me show you in the document, actually. One is worm. Oh, is it really? I didn't even know what worm was. Nice. Mizu. Not Mizu. So if I type in Japanese, I can just type the English letter, so M-I, and it switches to a me. Type Z-U. So it's just a, z a zoo. And then I hit space. And it switches to the kanji I want. There you go. That's how you would type in Japanese. Mizu. I don't know if Mizu has... Mizu doesn't apparently have a kanji like that. I'm, I'm curious now. Oh wow. Brian wants to play Fortune Street. Did he send this just now? Thank you. Uh, sorry. Let me get back. I'll tell this person I'm going to get back to them later. I'll get back to you. Uh, an hour. <laughs> okay. Now I'm curious about Mizu, with two eyes. Google Translate, by the way. This is something good to know. Mizu. Mizu didn't come up with anything. Are you sure about this? Are you sure about this? I'm gonna type in worm and see what happens. Worm. Wamu. <laughs> they gotta have a word for worm besides wamu. This. What is this? Kaichu is a round worm. So the thing about Google Translate... You, you hope the sad... It worked! Good job! <laughs> Dad jokes are good. I wish you could play too, Sad Sloth. I wish you could play. Um, oh, okay, so the thing about Google Translate is it's not very good for sentences. Anything beyond a simple sentence is not going to be good. But Google Translate is pretty good for is just single words. So if you want to look up one word at a time, that's what you can use Google Translate for. If you want to try to post sentences in somebody's Twitch chat and pretend like you know Japanese, it's going to be obvious that you don't. So just just a note there. Unless you get lucky. Kyato ninden teyande. Cat. I guess cat. Ninden teyande.
I lied to you. Somebody else lied to you. What is, I don't even know what you're saying. I don't even know what you're saying. Sorry. But that doesn't mean it's not a thing. Hikikomori. <laughs> Samurai Pizza Cats. Oh, okay. Well, it might just be something that doesn't come up in Google Translate, Angelic Dirt. It could still be a thing. <laughs> so, time to split knows about Hikikomori. So, those are people that don't leave the house. I know about Hikikomori only because of anime also. Anyway, you guys who've watched anime probably have heard Choto Mate, or Choto Mate Kudasai. Please wait a minute, or a second. Choto is just a little. So please wait a little. Choto Mate. Mate is the... Oh yeah, we do have another form of verbs, that's the command. But this form can be used for a lot of different things. One of them is the command, so that's one other thing, but... That's something you learn later. Choto Mate. Wait a sec. Chotomate kudasai, please. Kudasai, there's a couple ways to say please, but kudasai is one. Kudasai, chotomate kudasai, or... Onegaishimasu is another way of saying please. That's usually when you're asking for something or just saying please by itself. Which you may have also heard onegai. Like... I don't know. <laughs> onegai senpai. <laughs> don't touch my hair like that. Okay. <laughs> Sumimasen is a useful one. You can say excuse me or sorry with sumimasen. Sumimasen is usually like excuse me. But it's it's a very nice, useful word. You bump into somebody, you can say sumimasen. You want to get somebody's attention, you can say sumimasen. Yeah. Alright. Nice. What do you think, guys? Do you want me to keep going with this, or do you want me to stop? We've been going for an hour, and I mean, you can only take so much studying at once, but if you're having a good time, I could just keep going for another hour. What do you think? Let's pull up the next page. Don't feel like you have to keep paying attention if you don't want to, though. But, I do want to mention, though, uh, Mikil, M-C-I-L-L, -L, is going to be streaming chemistry at 3 o'clock. Going, he's going to be showing how to make soap and explaining some of the science behind it. So, don't forget to stick around for that afterwards. The kill stream will be teaching how to make soap. That is something special. Alright. Let's pull up the next... What the heck? Oh, I never even did... Whoa. Microsoft Word is being weird right now. You can see it too. Oh, there we go. I never did tell you about numbers. You like making soap? I've never made soap in my life. I have no idea. I'm pretty sure it's just like cooking though. And I don't like I don't know how to do cooking either. You just mix things together, right? And then it comes out. <laughs> numbers, by the way, you just have to memorize numbers, guys. Numbers are boring. Ichi, ni, san, shi, or yon. These have two things. You might have heard that she, the number four, sounds like the word for death, which is sheen. So a lot of times they'll say yon, but uh, there's different times you use each one. It's like cook. Wow. Well, I mean, with normal cooking fast fly, you have a chance to have normal burns, just not caustic burns. It's very dangerous. Cooking and chemistry. Uh, so I don't. Numbers are boring because you just have to memorize them, but they're also a pain because one of the harder things with Japanese are there's there's actually counters? They're suffixes you add on to numbers according to what you're counting. Shinigami, God of Death. Shinigami. I can read that one. Shini Shini Koroshi. Koroshi vi kill. Die, die, kill. <laughs> but yes, Shinigami is related to that she sound. And Shin. Because it has that first kanji there is death, and the other one's God. 
or spirit. So numbers, like I was saying, they have different suffixes depending on what you're counting. So that's something that's just more complicated than necessary. I don't know why it's like that, but it is. So depending on what you're counting in Japanese, you can't just say, oh, there's there's knee of those, there's two. You would say there's knee something. You're counting small animals? Oh, that's knee hiki. Knee hiki. Two small animals. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, you're counting books? Oh, then you have to use satsu because of bound objects. So knee satsu, there's two books. Oh, flat objects? Ni mai. Two, two flat things. Like CDs or paper. Or hon for cylindrical objects, like pencils. It's really obnoxious. There's a whole bunch of them. There is also a set of generic counters if you don't know what the counter is supposed to be. But yeah, that's a big pain. I am counting in Japanese is way more annoying than it should be. But it, it's that's just how it is. Ichi, yes. Yep. Depending on... <laughs> but... Like... Itotsu, Itatsu, Mitsu. So that's one, two, three generic things. <laughs> so that's how you could count. That's how you can count stuff you don't know how to count. And it's another thing, it's like another whole set of numbers to memorize. It's a big, big, huge pain. So there are a couple things that are big, huge pains in Japanese, including counting and politeness. Now, I explained this a little bit before, but how to make sentences, we're just, we just start out with simple sentences, like our desk thing that we used before when saying, Watashi no namai wa Ryan desu. We have our subject, we have our thing that is, and we have des saying is. Des is the is. And there's different forms. Des, janai des, for is not. Cool! Cool! <laughs> Very nice. Janai des, so this is, these are our different ways. Des, janai des, for is not. Deshta, for was. Janakata des for it was not. And then you just put your things in. So uh, the main example here, you just fill in the blanks with what you want to talk about. But well, we don't know too much vocab now, but I always think that grammar is most important because once you learn the grammar pattern, you can just look up the vocab yourself and memorize as much as you want, whatever topics you want, and then you can just fill in the blanks with the grammar that you know and understand or say things. So that's why I like to learn I mean, definitely vocab is really important, and if you're not disciplined, then you're never going to learn anything, but um, with grammar, then you know how to use the vocab. So that's that's my favorite thing to learn, is grammar. Vocab is just sit there and memorize it, which is not that fun. How localization is done. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> probably in <laughs> 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 
Yep. I don't know. I haven't ever noticed that, but maybe. Uh, some of the best localizations I've ever seen are... The Phoenix Wright games are so good, like... I don't know how. They must have had to rewrite a whole ton of stuff, because Phoenix Wright games are hilarious in English. Like, the English translation is so good. And I can only imagine they must have had to rewrite a whole bunch, but they still managed to keep the plot also really good. So... I don't know, that's that's impressive. Like, I would not ever feel qualified to translate a Phoenix Wright game because the, the current translations are just so good. Uh, also, Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors, that's quite good. And the sequels, uh, Zero Escape, Virtue's Last Reward, and uh, Zero Time Dilemma, which is coming out at the end of this month. Those are all really, really good story-based games. Uh, what's a game that has bad translation? A lot of JRPGs, like, even modern JRPGs, like, if you, if you know Japanese, you can sort of tell when something is overly literally translated. Like, not even necessarily jokes, but there's just sort, certain things that you only really say in Japanese, and in English you would, you just wouldn't say that thing. You'd, like, say something else, or you'd reword it. Or, like, there are certain sentences like that where... Like, for translation, like, translating 101 that's like, oh, just translate this to this because we don't have that phrase or whatever. And you can tell, like, they didn't really think too hard about it. And, uh, I feel like... Oh, really, Marks? Yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised they did that. That's kind of sad, though. It feels, it feels lazy, but... Maybe rhyming isn't quite a, as big of a deal in Japanese. Maybe like... Like Haiku, for example. Yeah, I was thinking of the Tales games, actually, when I was saying this Angelic Dirt. The Tales games, especially. Xeno... I don't know which Xeno games. I've only played... Xeno Saga I played a long time ago. Xenoblade Chronicles, I think, was pretty good. I don't remember. But the Tales games definitely have some pretty literal, bland translations. But, they get the job done, but yeah, they're just not... They're not outstanding. Like, it it, you, it takes a really good translation to be like, oh wow, this is really good. Like, it sounds like... It, it's just a difference. It's just a difference. You have to be able to write and translate to get a good translation, because you're gonna have to come up with how to say things in an interesting way in English, and not just how they said it in Japanese in English, but how to convey what they said in a cool way that that does adds character to the characters and makes sense and doesn't lose any meaning, but it's also not just like a direct convert words to this. So that's what that's what translation's about. You gotta make it sound natural and, you know, good. Certain speech patterns, yeah. I know a lot of characters in Japanese games will have, like, some ending thing that they'll do, or they'll, like, change the way they say deaths, or, um, what was I gonna say? Oh, yeah, because uh, about rhyming, Mikhail was saying I should, I should tell you a, a Japanese haiku, and I don't, I don't know any Japanese haikus, I'd have to just Google one, but that's sort of something there, because, like, that's not really rhyming, it's just based on the number of syllables, which works really well because of how I was saying with each letter, like here, e ro, each letter is just its own syllable, so it's based on how many letters are in each word, and so it, it's sort of, the language lends itself to haikus, whereas, I don't know, in like second grade when you learn syllables and you try to write a haiku in English, it's just not really the same, like English isn't meant for haiku, but Japanese, it makes sense to use haikus. Which, by the way, I'm remembering something else. So, ha, I was saying how easy verbs were. You don't have to change them according to the subject. Uh, nouns are also really easy. So here we have... Let's look at our example sentence. Sore wa neko desu. You might know the word neko. Neko is pretty common in anime and life. Neko is a cat. Uh, sore is that. That is the subject. Wa means sub this is the subject. Sore wa. Neko. Cat. Des. Is. Now, nouns are also pretty easy because you have one cat, you have many cats, it's still just Neko. 
How is this? How can this be? How do you know whether it's one or many? Well, because of the context, usually. So, usually you just know because, oh, there's a cat right there. It's, it's, it's a Neko. Neko desu. Sorewa or Arewa over there. Gato. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's Spanish. Well. <laughs> so maybe that's why? <laughs> uh, so Neko, it's, it's just Neko. One cat, many cats. So if you want to say there's many cats, then that's how we, we used our numbers like that. Like if you have, oh, there are three cats, you know, why, why do you have to change cats? Because you already said three, so you know there's more than one cat, you know there's three of them. Sanbiki no Neko, or Neko ga Sanbiki imas. there are three cats. So you already have the number of the sentence, or Taksan for a lot. Neko ga Taksan imas. there are a lot of cats. Three cats. So it makes sense. Why Why would you need to add an S to Neko's? You just have Neko. It's one Neko or three Neko. All the words are like that. Although there are a few you can add Tachi or... there's There are some words where it has a, a, a plural form, but it's more just to like be clear. <laughs> Look, we have three Kipos. Three Kipo. Three Franker Z. Inu is dog, by the way. Inuzi. Sorry, wa neko des. Now, let me just write out the sentence. We could also say, Sorry, wa neko genai des. That's not a cat. So we have sorry for that, by the way. By the way, kore would be this. Kore, sorry, these are good words to know. There's also are for things over further away that way. That over there. Are. Kore, sore, are. Good. Excellent. Sore wa neko genides. So, genides is how we can say is not. So we have des for is. Genides is not. Do you remember, guys? Do you remember what particle we used to make something a question? Do you remember? Do you remember? I'm going to see who remembers. Who remembers the question marker particle? Yes! Haha! -ha. So! Correct. So. <laughs> For example, if we were to add ka to the sentence, we had. Sore wa neko des. This is a cat. Or that that is a cat, sorry. Teacher's pet. <laughs> Time to split. Uh, you're, that's, that is a thing. So, ka here, so if we had sore wa neko desu, that is a cat, we might want to add ka to make this a question. Sore wa neko desu ka? Is that a cat? That's all you do, you just add ka and it becomes a question. So in English we sort of switch the uh, the sentence order around, but in, in Japanese it's even easier. Sore wa neko desu ka? And you do inflect your voice a little bit. But sore wa neko desu ka? Is that a cat? Or, well, sore wa neko janai desu ka? That would be kind of weird. Is that not a cat? <laughs> uh, yeah. It's that easy. Deshta. Sure, let's learn Deshta also. Deshta is the past form of des. So now you could say was. Neko Deshta. It was a cat. Maybe you're conversing with somebody. Maybe you say, oh, they're holding this cat or something. So usually sore is for something next to the person you're talking to. And are is next to neither of you. That over there. So maybe they're holding the cat. 
and it doesn't even look like a cat. You're like, sorry, one neko desu ka? And they're like, hi, neko desu. Yes, it's a cat. Or maybe you saw something run across the street over there. Arewa neko deshita ka? Was that a cat? And then somebody might say, ie. Um, I don't know. What was it? Not a cat. It was something else. It was a... Something else. <laughs> Ie! <laughs> Hoka no mono or betsu na mono datta. Deshita. <laughs> there. Hi! Hi, it was a cat. Alright. Hi, neko deshita. No. Inu deshita. Ie! Inu deshita. It was a dog. It was a llama. Oh, here's something interesting. Well, you probably, you might already know this, but this is relevant to Twitch. This isn't even really a Japanese lesson. Well, it sort of is. It's Japanese culture. Did you know, Kappa, well, a Kappa is a river monster turtley thing. Oh my dog, yet inu des. Yep. Let me get you a picture of a kappa. You've probably seen them. Here we go. There you go. There's a kappa. Kappa. Oh, there. Oh, I bet there probably is one in in uh, this. What's it called? Ninja starring Goemon. Yeah, they have the water on their head. So, legend says, I think, that if the water on their head spills, then they, like, can't move or something. So you're supposed to, like, trick them to bow, and then the water will spill, and then they, they're stuck that way. So that's how you beat a Kappa. But otherwise, they may try to drag you into the river and drown you, or they'll prank you, or they'll, like... I forget what do they do. They like pee on you or something. I forget. There's some weird thing. Yeah. You gotta know how to beat the kappa. There's a there's a lot of of Japanese folklore monsters, and kappa is probably the most well known. And it's especially relevant for Twitch because kappa, 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 kappa. Also, I believe that's a Greek letter. <laughs> Human intestine. Mmm, my favorite. Oh, you see this? It's delicious. <sighs> Through your butt! Oh my gosh! See, they they try to make kappas all friendly these days for kids. Like, oh, it's a cute little kappa. But then, like back in the old days, yeah, they were scary monsters that ate your intestines through your butt. Mm. So I told you that you could say Nekogenides. But I should mention that you can only use this Jedidas if you're talking about nouns. Something is not noun. Or not adjective, but we don't know about there's two different kinds of adjectives, but basically only use Jedidas for, for saying nouns are not. You have to keep the kids out of, Yeah, that's probably why they did it actually. You're probably right. So we're saying Neko Jedidas. It is not a cat. But, um, you need to only use genides for nouns, because adjectives, specifically e-adjectives, they all end in an e, or that's written like an i, that's why they're called e-adjectives, they work a little bit different, differently. So you probably know a few e-adjectives already from watching anime and from being on the internet, like kawaii, kawaii is cute, Ah, kawaii... Or oishi, oh, it's delicious. And those are probably the only ones you know, actually. Uh, maybe you know. I think hentai is an e adjective. <laughs> or hentai, he, no, hentai is a noun slash na adjective. So no, you can't use hentai that way. Hentai would work with this. 
<laughs> but, kawaii. <laughs> I have all the best examples. Uh, kawaii is gonna is an e adjective, so we're gonna have to follow these rules for that one. This is the only only slightly weird thing. Normally, it's just normal. Kawaii des, yay! It's cute, but you don't say janai des for this. You would say kawaii kunai des. You take off the last e in your e adjective, and you put kunai instead. Kunai des. Uh, so our example here, samui. Samui is cold. That one would be samu kunai. Samu kunai des. For not cold, it's not cold. And once again, our subject would come before the wa, so we can make sentences now. You can say something wa, something des, and now you can make simple sentences. This is this. Something is something. Like I don't know, kappa wa, kawaii des. Kappas are cute. Or. How about we have our we have our example words down here? We have some example words like um, I don't know. Here, try to figure out this. Oh, you don't know this word though. <laughs> uh oh no. Okay, we'll do this. Atashi no inu wa. Um, this is a stupid sentence. Here we go. <laughs> I I always even when I teach lessons in real life, my example sentences are always ridiculous. It's just like whatever pops into my head that uses the grammar. So, what do, you, what do we think this one is? By the way, I would like to advertise myself. I, I do teach Japanese lessons in real life. Um, and I would be willing to teach them over Skype, too, if anybody's interested. So, if you're interested in taking Japanese lessons, yeah, I do them. For money. Uh, and I am totally fine with focusing on what certain people want to learn, so if somebody's more interested in reading and writing, then we can do that, or if you're not at all interested, then we can not do reading and writing, and, uh, if you're interested in learning stuff because you're traveling, we can learn travel phrases. It's all that sort of thing. Any guesses? Any guesses on this sentence? So, I'll break it down. I'll break it down. Too slow. So, so close. Yes. So we had Watashi no my Inu dog wa things before. Or the topic. Oishi kunai that was not delicious. Des is so we had Oishi. I only just taught this, so I don't blame you for not knowing for sure, but. Oishi was delicious, and we take off last E and put kunai to make it negative. Mm. So, the reason why Watashi no Inu wa. Mo shinde shimatta kara oishi kunai desu. This is way more complicated than anything I've taught yet today. So I, I there's no way anybody's gonna know. That's a stereotype. 
Well, no, I just, my next sentence was... I told you I have the best examples. My dog has been dead and buried for years. Of course it's not delicious. Atashi no ini wa mou shinde shimatta kara oishikunai desu. Inu no taka desu. Inu no takos. Oh, here's something. Here's something. So, so Taco Octopus. <laughs> Interesting thing. So, tacos aren't aren't very common in Japan. <laughs> So if you say taco in Japan, they're probably going to think octopus and not the Mexican tacos. I feel like I've, I've pretty much, I've talked quite a bit already, so I, I should probably just, we should just talk about things. Taco taco su. Yeah. Yum. I would eat that. That sounds pretty good. Oh, by the way, so we use no for watashi no to say my. We could use, we could say, we, a lot of things we'll even use no, even if it's not really in English you would think it'd be possessive. You could probably say taco no taco su. It sort of modifies them too, so like, octopus tacos, I don't know. Then again, you, you don't necessarily. But like, that's in a lot of game titles, like Dogutsu no Mori for Animal Crossing. Dogutsu no Mori is literally Animal's Forest. Uh, so you might just say Animal Forest. But animals, forest, forest belonging to animals, I guess. You can string multiple no's together, so we had no for possessive things. Like, we had Watashi no Inu. What about. You think. So if. If my name. Good question. So, okay. Japanese names. Japanese names are usually written in kanji. So, English English names in Japanese, you just sort of spell it out phonetically. But Japanese names are usually going to be written in kanji. And kanji each have both, like, multiple different sounds. They might have different pronunciations. But they also have a meaning because they all came from Chinese characters, and, and Chinese characters were written with a with, uh, meaning in mind more than a sound in mind. So that's why um, names will also have a meaning, because they'll use the meaning of each kanji. So if... Are you thinking of... What was that? Yagami Light? Was his name Moon? Did he, he have, the, have the character for Moon? Trying to think. His was a weird name because light, it's like an anime character. But for example, if you spell, so he he had a weird name. Whoops.
Hikari? Hikari is light, yes. And Hikari is a name also. Uh, I'm trying to think. I'm really bad at kanji and meanings of... Well, I don't know. I'm just bad at kanji in general. But, uh... Yeah, so names are going to be spelled with kanji, and so if you know the meanings of the kanji, that's what the name means. And a lot of times they're going to have names that intentionally use, like, nice-sounding, nice nice-looking nice kanji. Like, oh, flower child, or something like that. Or a lot of them are child, like... Like, oh, here's one. So, Yukiko, 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 uh, actually, maybe that's Ami, wait. I thought Yukiko would use that one, but maybe not. Now I'm, now I'm not so sure. Maybe you don't use kanji for that. What? Well, I was gonna write it this way. There's sometimes little sister Hikari. Nice. That's a cute name. There's sometimes there's different ways you can write the same name. So that can be a confusing thing. So the same name might mean different things depending on which kanji you use. But for example, this way of writing Yukiko. This is Yuki, right? Yeah, that's Yuki. All right. So Yuki Yuki plus ko snow plus child. Yeah. So that's how names can have meanings. It depends on which kanji you're using, because each kanji has... Because <laughs> each kanji has a meaning. And that's the way you usually learn kanji, too, is what is the meaning. So a lot of times, I'll see a kanji, or I'll see words that have multiple kanji together like this, and I'll know the meaning, but I won't even know how to pronounce it. I'll be like, oh, that it has something to do with... Like, oh, that's like a, a water pipe or something. And I have no idea how you say water pipe off at the top of my head. I, I might be able to guess, but uh, I would know, like, oh, that's the kanji for water, and that's the kanji for pipe, or, like, way that water goes, or, you know, so something like that. And you could figure out what the meaning is, even if you don't know how to say it. So that's, that's kind of an interesting thing about how kanji work. Yeah. Oh, nice. Mikhail started his stream up. He's getting ready. You guys have any other questions? I'm curious. Any other questions? Now's a good time to ask. I like answering questions. And how do you how do you like this sort of stream, by the way? This is the first time I've tried something like this at all. Like I, I thought about doing this before, but I never really tried it before, so... I, I don't think Twitch is exactly perfectly set up for this kind of thing. I did write a blog post about how I thought it could work better, but I know Twitch isn't set up for teaching, but uh, I feel like once in a while it could work, especially like the basic thing. The problem would be people coming in like multiple lessons in and they wouldn't know. <laughs> Ghost Fishy! Oh man, you just missed it! Ghost Fishy, you missed the lesson. Shoot. Well, I'm gonna highlight it, alright? I'm gonna highlight my lesson. If you wanna go back and watch Ghost Fishy, I just taught basic Japanese. The very basics. Time thinks it's cool. Do you have any questions about Japanese Ghost Fishy?
No questions? Oh, okay. Well. Hmm. Oh man, I'm bummed that you missed it, Ghost Fishy. I'm really bummed. That's too bad. That really is too bad. It was a good time. You're hungry right now. <laughs> Alright, that's a good question. So, now, Ima is now. Onaka ga suita. So, Ima equals now. And, Onaka ga suita equals stomach is empty, basically. So, that's. That's a phrase that means hungry. Onaka ga suita. So onaka is stomach. Onaka. Ima. Ima onaka ga suita. <laughs> nani. Nani o tabetai desu ka? What do you want to eat? Nani ga tabetai desu ka? By the way, the, I was telling people earlier that des, it's such a common word that you sort of drop the, the u at the end. Des, des ka. Instant noodles, oh! Oishi desu ne! Oishi so! That sounds delicious. <laughs> I guess. Oishi so. You know, I've heard that it's pretty good. If you add a hard boiled egg to your instant ramen, it's pretty pretty good. You can add hard boiled egg, you can add like uh, chopped up like chives, you can add uh, bean sprouts. You can make your instant ramen like super good. Or you can just, I mean, probably if you're making instant ramen, then alright. If you're making instant ramen, probably you don't want to put all that effort in. <laughs> the point of it being instant ramen is that it's instant, so. I don't know. I'm I'm about out of things to say. I guess it, are people. People have any other questions? I think Mikhail is still setting up, but he does have his stream up. So I'm gonna wait for Ghost Fishy to get back. But I will be I'll be moving on over to Mikhail's stream pretty soon because he's gonna be doing chemistry. Chemistry lesson: how to make soap. And he's gonna be making soap on stream. So. This is our cool Twitch education day, trying that out. Because Twitch doesn't have an education section, but it totally should. And if you see in my title here, I wrote a blog post about how I think Twitch education could work. Uh, let's see, also... kill stream right now. <laughs> uh, I guess that's about it. I guess I'll just pass you guys over to McKill's stream. Sorry again that Ghost Fishy makes it, missed it, but uh, I definitely appreciate everybody who stopped by and was watching, and hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you got interested in Japanese. Uh, I will 
Maybe I'll put up the notes somewhere. I'll host the notes so you can download the notes. <laughs> Alright, Ghost Fishy, cool. I think I'm gonna upload the notes somewhere, otherwise you can just watch the stream too. Thanks. 